Hi everybody, welcome to another local gov Drupal um, uh, demo. What we're going to have a look at today is actually creating a sub team. So we've we've got uh, our local gov team here at the moment with the nice purple background and the white links in the header, and we can see these alerts for if there's a notable person has died, it's black. If it's an emergency, it's red. If it's a minor alert, it's um, yellow, and if it's a standard alert, it's a green color. Um, We've got a few other bits and pieces maybe we could look at. I'm going to kind of do it quickly because I've actually got a meeting starting in a couple of minutes. Uh, let's have a look at a step-by-step -step page here. And I'm going to move down here to an individual step in a step-by-step -step page. I think this kind of shows how the team works very well. So on this, for example, you've got this purple title on the, um, the name of each of the steps. You've got the purple background here for the um, step counters and you got the purple border here. Uh, beside the, the active step. So let's have a quick look at how we create a sub team. Um, it's pretty easy. If we cd to our web teams custom local gov base, nope, why is that not here? cd web teams custom. Oh, I don't have it here. Uh, of course I don't. It's a. Uh, <coughs> I should have it here actually. Teams, custom. Oh no, it's in contrib. Yeah. So CD web teams contrib local gov base. Yeah, okay. Inside local gov base, we've we've created a, a little script here for ourselves. So we've got one here inside scripts called uh, create sub team. And then we've got these sub team items directory here, which has our sub team dot team file. Oh, that shouldn't be that team that yaml. That should be the just dot team. Uh, I'll get that fixed and actually, let's do it now. No, I won't. Uh, because I know it's going to break something if I do. Sub team dot libraries dot yaml file, uh, sub team dot info dot yaml file. This is underscored to make sure that it doesn't actually show up on the actual teams page itself. And then there's a template here for html dot html dot twig. I'll go to that in a moment. A CSS file and then assets just has uh, some fav icons for us. So let's, uh, let's run that script. Bash scripts sub oops not sub team items create sub team dot sh and this is going to ask us then for the name of our sub team so i'm going to call this team here mark conroy so this would be the human readable name of the team it's allowed to have um have spaces and then the machine name for the team this would be the name for the directory and uh, the um info.yaml file things like that so i'll call this one here mark conroy and click enter <clears throat> and that's it we now have a sub team created for ourselves we'll see it here in a custom slash mark conroy and that now is given us a uh, mark conroy libraries that yaml mark conroy info that yaml the, the thing that didn't work was um this sub team that team that yaml so that sh that shouldn't be called that yaml that should just be sub team dot team so that should have, I'll fix that up in a few minutes, that should have copied over to here and been called, oh, it's been called Submark Conroy, that team. <clears throat> now it's gonna do nothing anyway, we don't have anything in it, but this this would could have been or will be used for our hot uh, pre-process node or something, something like that, that we, we can create our custom variables, a variable called what? Hello, and we can print that then in our in any node template that we want to. So this would be a Mark Conroy preprocess node. So let's have a look in our Drupal setup here and just see that we do have a new team. So this is a local gov base, this is the base team itself. And we've got one down here called Mark Conroy. So let's install this team. And then uh, We'll set this as our default team. Now, before we see what that does, <clears throat> I'm going to have a quick look here at what we actually get in our base team or in our in our new custom team. So we get the standard stuff here to, to, to name the uh, the team, and we say that then that our base team is going to be local gov underscore base. So we'll inherit all the CSS and uh, JavaScript from the local gov base team, and then we've created a variables um, a variables library here. So this will allow us to override the CSS that 
comes in from here. And then we declare each of the regions uh, that are available in this team, which are actually the same as the regions that are available in the in the local gov base team. This is to make sure then that every block that's positioned in the um, local gov base team will end up in the same region in our uh, sub team here. Um, in the library then, the library is um, just a, a file called css slash variables.css. Now we've given it a weight of 200. That's to make sure that this is called after the the, the variables file or after the CSS files from the base team, <clears throat> just to make sure then that our variables override their variables, let's say. Um, and inside the variables.css file, then we've got some notes here on how to add fonts if you want it via Google Fonts. So in this case, we're adding the uh, Oswald font here and we're adding the weights of 300, 400 and 700. Now it might be faster, the fonts actually loading if you load them in the html.html.twig file. So we, we've actually, part of this is it creates the html.html.twig file. It extends the one that comes with local gov base. And inside html.html.twig, we have a block, a, a twig block called extra head items. And we'll use that one there then to add extra items in here for ourselves. So for example, these three things here are fav icons, but they're fav icons which have a specific color that would be specific to your team. So at the moment they're all set to white, you might want them set to uh, I think that's red, or you might want to set to, I think that's yellow or wh whatever it is. So at the moment they're set to white, you can override those, but you can also then in here add in things like, let's have a quick look here at local gov base, uh, templates, layout, html.html.twig. And we've got some notes here saying that maybe you might want to add some Google fonts. So if you want your fonts to load a little bit faster than loading them from your style sheet, you can pop that in here and now this will load the open sans font at weight 400 and 700. i'm going to take this out just for now because i'm happy to have just the uh, the oswald font loaded via our css file so where is that gun that's here so this gives us the fonts and then override whatever variables you want now we've got plenty of or hopefully we've got plenty of documentation in here and examples of how to how to change things so you can follow along with that so in our default base team, we've got a color called color accent, and that's what's set to purple, which gives us this purple here and uh, these purples here and things like that. So let's, oh, forms and local group, Drupal web form. Okay, we've got a forms working group starting soon. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, let's change our color accent. In this case, we said we want it to be green, and we've set it our font secondary, and that's the font that, that is um, set for headings and things will be Oswald, but if Oswald isn't available, use the default primary font that we have already set in our base um, in our base team. Now we, we could easily change um, font primary here to be something like, uh, we'll just go with serif, you know, and, and then if Oswald isn't available, this won't use the font primary from the parent team, it will use this font primary here. So there's a nice inheritance going on from one, item to the next. I'm also setting our line height to be 1.3 in the base team, it's at 1.5. So let's come back to our team, our installation, refresh this, we should see this change to green for us now, the header background. Here we go. And we can see this is a slightly different green here uh, for, oh no, it's not actually, no, it's, that's the same. Uh, let's see what else we get. We get, so all these greens, these all inherit now first, and you can see then that the, each individual step uh, the title and the colors have, have changed. But what if you want to change the header background color, but you don't want to change these here? Well, what we've done is we've created uh, individual variables for each. So the header background color uses a variable called uh, var color section header bg. And then if I hover over this, you can see that color section header bg is set to color accent so if you change the accent color it will change this background color here but if you only want to change the header background color you can you can easily do that by setting this to we we'll say let's go with pink just for now and refresh this page and now you can see that it changed the header background color but it doesn't affect all the rest of the site where our color accent is set um, let's just have a look maybe at our line height here at 1.3. Let's put this to say 
3.3 just to make a big difference and we can make sure we can see things taking effect you can see now yeah how, how much spacing we get so almost everything that you're going to need to override in your local gov base um in your local gov sub team based on local gov base as its base team is available as a as a color or as, as a variable so if we look at the the um the link colors here in the header again we can see we've got a variable called color header link color and that's set to here color white so again we can change this if we wanted to say that header link color will be uh I'll just put in black for for now uh in general you know, we, we, we would create more colors here called dash dash color um primary and it's set it to primary or secondary or whatever it is to keep things keep things generic so we come back refresh this page and now we get our black items here and <clears throat> that's all we need to do so most of our css should be creating a variables file resetting what we want the different uh, variables to be and then applying those variables in in uh, in certain places so what we, we could do here would be to keep this generic have maybe a, a section uh, background whoops background color and that could be pink and then we tell the color section header background to use var section background color oops there's an extra thing done in here like so and then if we had a footer um uh, background color as well you could do the same so, th so then we're, you know it keeps our style guide or keeps our kind of pattern library or keeps our brand guidelines the same that every section has a background color will be the same color so rather than having a pink in one place and you know almost pink in somewhere else and kind of the same pink but a little bit different somewhere else we keep them all to be the exact same and that's 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 about it really um we've got let's see have in the base team we have our css and our components sorry no base our variables we look at these first so what we've got is is specific variables for widths so the width of the main content area then large medium small widths and then the, the uh, this one here called width container which is which is what we use to wrap our main content area we'd say that, that that's going to be the same as width large um you've got some spacing then so our standard spacing is one rem and then small smaller smallest comes in increments of one quarter of a rem and then large larger largest comes in increments of a uh, half a rem uh, we've got colors we kept the colors very very minimal there's just our accent color and then we've got colors that we use for success and warning and things like that and then we've got grayscale again we don't have you know 50 shades of gray what we kept the two was you got white you got black and you got three shades in the center light medium and dark um if you want to add in more like lighter or darker or darkest or lightest you know you're free to add those in, in your own team then we apply these colors in, in certain places so our info color our success or danger warning and so on uh our fonts we got a primary font and a secondary font um <clears throat> for the base team these these don't load any external fonts because most people have roboto or oxygen or ubuntu these kind of ones uh saved in their browsers cache if you don't it'll give you a sensor font but you can be sure after visiting a website or two you'll end up with some of these so that means these will load very fast and we've just got the georgia and kind of a, a, a serif um uh font family loading then for the secondary font uh just to make sure things stay stay loading as fast as possible and then allow people to override that yourself with whatever way you want for your 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 custom uh, custom team then we got our font sizes so it's based on a font size of one rem and after that then we've got smaller smaller largest large larger largest and we use these for our font sizes h1 to h6 which also uses this clamp function which is very nice then so we get responsive fonts out of the box um let's see can we see that here actually uh this apply for financial support should get smaller as the screen uh starts decreasing in size probably won't, <laughs> won't work when it's a live demo uh it's not actually i wonder why oh there it is yeah okay it's it, it's depending on the window uh size as well okay you can see it there just for a small bit of time it starts starts moving um <clears throat> it's a pretty cool way of, of doing responsive fonts i might change the that slightly or maybe it's just the, the screen isn't large enough and the same then we got our borders or border width is one pixel large one is five pixels so you know if you want your large border width to be three pixels or seven pixels 
just change this one variable here. You don't need to write write the, the whole thing. And then we've got variables for what a border large is and a standard standard border that it used in lots of places. And after that, then these are all the, the variables declared. After that, then we just apply them. And this is basically the same then as our uh, this this section of the of the base variables a CSS file is basically the same as what you would be doing with your variables that CSS file. You, you get whichever variables you want to change, the breadcrumbs background color, the breadcrumbs border color, the breadcrumbs divider, whichever you want to change. And you pop those into your custom team and you change those to whatever you want them to be. So this could be accent and border could be border large. And you might change this to, I don't know, forward slash or something, something like that. And again, that's pretty much all you need, you need to do. If you want to override a template, well, it's the same as doing that with any Drupal team. You just grab the template you want to override. So you might want to override the, um, let's see, the node teaser template, for example. Yeah, for for whatever reason, if, if, if you want to, you can grab your node teaser, pop it into your templates directory. I guess we'll create a new one called content as well in here. And then you can <clears throat> say that all teaser titles have the word Marky after them. Um, I'm not sure we even see teasers in on this page, do we? No, we don't. They'll be on the home page. That's it. I wonder do we have any questions? That's that's how easy creating sub themes is for the local gov Drupal. And we, you know, I think it's I think it's working very well. A couple of uh, councils have used it, and they've they've transitioned from their. I'm not sure what all this is. Render template layout. Uh, I'll have a look at that later on. Yeah, so we get the word market and after each of those just because we <laughs> for no good reason really. Um let's get rid of that and Okay, see you later on so bye. Um that's kind of it really I think. Was there anything else I wanted to show? I think that's kind of about as much as we need to know. Um yeah, that should let us create a team, a sub team. Yeah, I was saying that other accounts have used it and they've transitioned from their current system to our system very, very uh, quickly. Um, I guess one nice thing that's in it, maybe I might give a quick look at it, is something like our uh, our grid system. So if I come to you no know, layout uh, page, then we've got a grid system based on the Gov UK design system, which <clears throat> has a class we called it LGD row. And then if you want something to be one third or two thirds, you just give the first uh, child of it that class LGD row one third or LGD row two thirds. So if, if we have a sidebar first region here, but there's no sidebar second region, then we get the sidebar rendering at one third of the screen, and then we get the main content rendering two thirds of the screen. And if we have a sidebar second, but no sidebar first, it's similar except the, the sidebar comes after it. And if we have a sidebar first and a sidebar second, then we get a one quarter then the main content is in half and then we get one quarter for the second sidebar and if there's no sidebars at all it gets a class of full so that that's a very easy way to, for for uh writing our, our our grid system and we 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 use that in a lot of places then say um i'm not sure if it's used here i think it might be but it's it's used in uh some of the service pages and things what's that big error i'm getting undefined index hello oh yeah that's uh, that's coming from here, Mark Conroy team undefined index. Hello. Okay, let's get rid of. I'll just comment that out for now. And on a service page, I think. Yeah, I think we have have the grid system then in use here, so we can see. Yep, the UL class here has a class of LGD row, and then each of the items in it has class of LGD row, one third, one third, one third. And you can change those to half very easily. So you know you can see it a uh, maybe a quarter, and quarter. So you, you can see how quickly we can you, you can build up your your grid system here. So let's uh ah oh, okay we'll do. I'm gonna finish up there. Let's see if there's any questions on the Twitch. We have no viewers, so I guess we have no questions. Let's end the stream, and I will chat to you all soon. Thank you, everybody.